Pai tribes are one of the most marginalized community in India. Lack of constitutional safeguards, social stigmatization and criminalization attached to their identities make them prone to violence and vulnerable in every walk of their life. Nomadic and denotified tribes are wandering communities who move from one place to another in search of their livelihood and fulfilling their basic needs. Because of their wandering tradition, the nomadic and denotified tribes have no permanent residence. As a result, they do not get uh, decent housing um, and have to live their life on vacant spaces and move on to the next nomadic cycle. Despite being denotified, these nomadic groups continue to face severe, severe discrimination and ostracism. They are still perceived as social outcasts by upper caste villagers, unduly harassed by the police and enforcement, of, enforcement officials, and are effectively ignored by the Indian state. Due to this constant wondering, they do not get respect from the rest of the society, which results in undignified life. However, there are groups and communities in India we, uh, who have not been paid adequate attention even after 66 years of independence. During the colonial rule, the nomadic mobile groups had been seen as a threat to rooted settled life and for a colonial administration. The colonial state completely misinterpreted the Indian caste system and declared the nomadic tribes as a born criminal. The British rule not only gifted the tag of criminality but also destroyed their traditional occupation with introduction of colonial new market economy, commercial exploitation of forest, transportation and communication networks. Britishers view criminality through the lens of pervasive caste system in India and thus interpreted crime as a caste based or as, a, or as an inheritable occupation with the objective of establishing greater control over rebel uh, rural regions and nomadic groups resisting the British Indian authorities. The Criminal Tribe Act 1871 ostensibly labelled almost 200 tribal groups as a born criminal. After India's independence, this brutal act was repealed in 1952 but was replaced with the Habitual Offenders Act 1952 which was a de facto continuation of the Criminal Tribe Act 1871. Even after 66 years of independence, society and police consider these tribes, consider these uh, nomadic de denotified tribes as a, uh, as a criminal tribes. The nomadic tribes and denotified tribes are constantly harassed by the rest of the society and the police machinery. Surprisingly, even today, we do not see any legislation preventing such an injustice and exploitation of nomadic and denotified tribes. Also, due to continuous wandering, the children of nomadic and denotified tribes have to change their schools since majority of nomadic and denotified tribes do not have birth certificates, majority of the, their children do not get admission uh, into the schools and therefore remain educationally backward, especially as far as girls are concerned. The grassroots experiences show that even today the children from these communities face stigma and discriminations in the schools. Various government has appointed several commissions and committees for the development of nomadic and denotified tribes such as uh, Symington Co Committee, the All India Jail Reform Committee, the Munshi Commission, the Dr. Antrolikal Commission, Thadi Commission and Kaka Kalikar Commission. All these commissions have recommended the inclusion of nomadic and denotified tribes among the scheduled tribes. Moreover, in the year 2002, the Maharashtra State appointed State Backward Classes Commission under the chairmanship of Justice R. N. Bapat, which is known as Bapat Commission. The Bapat Commission also recommended that uh, NTDNT should be enlisted in the scheduled tribes. In the year 2005, for the first time in the history of India, the central government appointed National Commission for Nomadic and Denotified Tribes, Nomadic, Denotified and Semi-Nomadic Tribes under the chairmanship of uh, Mr. Balkrishna Renke, popularly known as Renke Commission. The Renke Commission has submitted uh, the study in the year 2008 to the government of India. But even after four years of its submission, the report is not available in the public domain. Therefore, uh, in the public domain, there are many subgroups in the nomadic and denotified tribes. And it is very difficult to bring them together with the feeling of solidarity, bringing them together and uniting for getting justice. It is a big challenge. I would like to quote here Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. All learn are the preserves of Brahmins, all war like services are the monopoly of the Kshatriya class. Trade is open only to Vaishya, 
services to the shudras those outside there nothing honorable left have been driven to this honorable and criminal ways of earning a livelihood this is the result of chaturvarna and it is a fundamental part of hindu civilization this creates an opinion that caste system was directly responsible for fertilizing criminality in these groups the criminal justice uh, system consists of three main parts law enforcement education and corrections in criminal justice system these distinct agencies operate together both under the rule of law and as the principal means of maintaining the rule of law within the society in the in the matters of nomadic and denotified tribes criminal justice system is very silent and cruel there is therefore need of greater sensitization of awareness to be spread among the law enforcement agencies so that they carry the mandate of law without any prejudice discrimination uh, to give uh, you, all of you more ideas about uh, nomadic and denotified tribes uh, one of my friend tanvi barge she is a student of uh, ma in uh, cultural media and cultural studies uh, she uh, prepared a document so documentary so have a, so we uh, Loko Priya is the general secretary of Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Gayatri, 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 G
and social status are also important factors for the development. The honest attempts we could do for the development of this community is to understand about them and to do more efforts to mobilize this community. With this hope, I would like to wish you all happy 61st Independence Day to all nomadic and denotified tribes. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Tanvi, for sharing your experiences with us. Uh, now I call upon the stage Mayan Sinha to share his experiences. Gentlemen and gentle ladies, and also the respected of our chief guest. Uh, I, I, I have been working for the last two years on this issue, particularly in the urban area. And we just completed one study on the status of uh, uh, Pardi living in Mumbai city. <coughs> in the short time, it's not, for me, it's not, uh, I cannot uh, explain the whole the report, but I, I can share a few major findings and the question that we come across during the study. The first, the whole uh, this uh, debate uh, about the stigmatization has been addressed in the various commission. And uh, also in the various uh, report, like for example, first backward uh, commission, or also the the important commission is the LOQ, our local commission, who is set up in the central government to review uh, the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe uh, during the 1965. So one of the observations that the commission share is that, uh, particularly in the context of anti dmts uh, the commission said that it reflect the uh, mixture of both the caste and the tribe. So therefore, it is very difficult to identify what is the caste and tribe. And similarly, the same confusion you can see not only the, at the national level, but also in the state of Maharashtra. For example, Pardi is uh, listed in the scheduled tribe and also listed in the DNT. Like for example, Fase Pardi is listed in the scheduled tribe and its subgroup, Haran Shikari Pardi, they are listed in the DNT. So their nomenclature is uh, really interesting why the state is doing so the, is also a sense of question. The second is, thing is that uh, the whole issue of the stigmatization, we need uh, some uh, uh, strong genesis and analysis on the issue of the stigmatization which I think is not able to address properly academically. Like for example, untouchability is a traditional aspect which has been ad addressed uh, at the various level and had been given affirmative action. Similarly, for example, women been, has been debated in the parliament. So the Indian society is a consists of multifaceted discrimination. This is a, you cannot uh, see the Indian society with a one eye or uh, through a one lens. Apart from the, like for example, if you are being a minority, there are chances you are being uh, discriminated. Similarly, in the case of anti anti, there is an element of stigma which has been present through thousands of years. I, I, I just want to quote you from the British 